these little seeds here are seeds of a plant called achocha. And most years we experiment with some sort of new crop which we haven't heard of before or which we haven't tried before. So this year it's a plant called achocha. I hope I've got the pronunciation right. It may well be that it's a different pronunciation in different parts of the world. But it's a cross between a cucumber uh, and something else which eventually produces fruits like this. They can be eaten raw, they can be used in stir-fries, they can be baked, cooked practically any way you like. And the plant that you can see behind me is the plant itself. On there, there are several of these, which because they're the same colour as the leaves, you probably can't see them. But they are there, I assure you. There's one, for instance. That one there is nearly ripe and we will be harvesting it fairly soon. But dotted around that lot, there must be at least 10, maybe 15 of them, all in a small little area like that. And we've already had several of them with more to come on the plant itself. You can also see just behind bottom part of a crop called Miscanthus. We'll talk about that in a minute. What you're looking at now is a crop called Miscanthus. When I say a crop, it is not edible. Some people call it elephant grass. It's, as you can see, a crop which is nearly three, possibly in places four meters high. This strip of ground is just behind our main vegetable garden. And the strip itself is about two meters wide on a steep slope, about 45 degree slope. And this piece of ground is about 13 or 14 meters long. So in total, this bit of ground measures about 25 square meters. It's at its tallest at the moment, this time of the year, middle of October. And I will cut it down in the middle of February when it's all thoroughly dried and all the green that you can see now has gone off it. As you can see the size of the crop and how dense it is inside there, the reason we keep it is purely as uh, uh, fire lighters. And I've made a little poem which perhaps describes some of the things about it really well because it's a brilliant fire lighter. I know it's pretty daft writing a poem about a crop which is going to be for firelighters, but this is a little poem I've written. Miscanthus is a grass, they write. It loves to grow and play. Looking like some bamboo canes, it smothers all since May. Mid-February is the time to cut and bundle up with string. Three mates high twill be by then, brown and a lovely thing. But what's the point, I hear you ask, why give it space to grow? Dried all year within the shed, firelighters superb I'll show. This is how I bundle up the miscanthus. This is just half of the height. I've already cut the bottom part off that and they're in their bundles in the shed. They've been in there since last mid-February. They dry out really thoroughly. As you can see, 
they're all completely light brown in colour, looking like bamboo, but it's not bamboo. Some places, as I mentioned, call it elephant grass. I don't think they'd very find it very palatable when it's uh, reached this stage. One extra bonus, I suppose, of storing the miscanthus in this way in the shed is that the birds seem to love it. When I started to get the first one out, first bundle out, uh, last week for the first fire of the year, I discovered two birds nests sitting right on top of the bundles. They obviously like it in there and during the summer I never go in this shed anyway. The space under the door and the door is deliberately shorter so that there's a good sp space in underneath it so that lots of air can get into the shed to make sure the miscanthus is dry and I'm guessing that whatever birds made these nests found that space underneath and that's the result. So we know that not only was it a benefit for wildlife during the winter where they get in and nestle up nicely but during the summer it produces an excellent place for them to have their nests and bring up their young.